goal technical analysis March 16th okay guys I'm just gonna do a quick video talking about goal where I think goal is heading where we know and what to look forward to right um, do you remember this video is um it's just a, a guide you know nothing is set in stone in the market so anything can happen this could be wrong you know it's not meant to be investment advice please trade out using your own risk and judgment as always you know so uh, let's let's start off let's start off with gold um, let's look at it on the weekly time frame okay here I have my chart of gold on the weekly time frame let's first begin with um, a look on gold in regards to cycles where it is now in the cycles time frame on a weekly basis gold has um, gold trades in the weekly cycles right which are longer than the daily cycles so you have yearly cycles you have weekly cycles and you have daily cycles so on a weekly cycle time frame um, the average length um, of gold weekly cycles are about 25 to 30 they're about 30 something sometimes all right uh, what is a what is a weekly cycle you may wonder um, all cycles all markets moving cycles right guys stock markets commodities everything some more so better than others um, gold has a pretty good uh, track record of cycles and follows usually follows it um, very accurately okay um, what is a cycle in A cycle is just um, just like um, Elliott wave, you know, you have waves, every market has waves. You have a, a low, which will mark a bottom to a high, and then a low. You know, that would be considered as one wave or one cycle. So, going back, let's, all right, let's look at a quick example. 2016. We had a bottom there, a low of 1245 on gold. And that, everybody remembers this move. This was like one of the best moves in a long time. Got up to about 1306, and then a bottom here at 1200. So this would be considered one weekly cycle. We had another weekly cycle from here to the side here, or about down here. Another, I mark them as the ICL, that stands for Intermediate Cycle Low. So from one Intermediate Cycle Low to the other, will be considered one weekly cycle. <coughs> Within a weekly cycle, you have several daily cycles, which are daily cycle time frame. So within this Intermediate Cycle here, this is one Intermediate Cycle, you had three daily cycles. One, two, and three usually you get about three to four in an intermediate cycle on gold i think i've seen cases where you had five but usually around four is the max all right so all right another example of well, this intermediate cycle over this is the next intermediate cycle we only have two daily cycles then everybody remembers this intermediate cycle very long 35 weeks and we got that massive move down um, in August last year, where everybody was calling for gold back to 900 or 1000 or whatever. I mean, that marked the bottom. And now we're in another weekly cycle. Uh, it was a, it's been very long so far. It's not 27, let me adjust this. We're now on week 30. So, <clears throat> from the bottom here in August, we've been running 30 weeks into this intermediate cycle right you ever I see a lot of people are still bullish on gold rightly so I mean this has been a strong move but at 30 at 30 weeks here at the top it's just too late to me to be chasing for more upside that's that's basically the length of most intermediate cycles so you're chasing at, at the almost the end of an intermediate cycle you're not gonna get to me it's just not enough time and um, 
Does the song have enough time and power to make that big move everybody is looking for? We need a law, we need an intermediate circle law to correct sentiment and you know to cleanse the market of latecomers. Anybody who bought up here at the top, this seems to be a top so far to me. I believe they're in for some more punishment. If they bought up here where well, this big dog move, they are hoping to get back to break even. Alright, if they not even a latecomers, anybody who probably bought this one, this dip right here, they think that's the bottom. It could be, I could be wrong. This could be the intermediate cycle over here, but just not enough time and not enough correction to get started for another new leg higher. We need to cleanse sentiment, we need to clear our sentiment, we need to see people getting bearish again. We need to see people calling for a thousand dollar, or not, not a thousand, maybe 1200, 1180 again. You know, we need to stop seeing so many bulls on Jane of boards. <laughs> That's what I think. Um, <coughs> a quick thing, um, so we got this moved on from the top here, if this is the top. And we had a two week bounce so far. Bounce looks mediocre to me. It doesn't look like any strength in it. No, not enough commitment in, from buyers yet, you know. Usually when you get these big bearish engulfing, you get like this continuation pattern. You get like small green candles, one, two, three, maybe even four allowed to do before resuming another leg down. So that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for one more leg down to complete this cycle right so that would be an intermediate cycle low somewhere down here um, I'll get into that in a second but I'm looking for another leg down okay when as I said 30 weeks and averages the, the last one was 35 so we should be able to get um another two to three weeks out of the cycle before it bottoms probably close to this i don't think it will run 35 because this was long so it should be a little bit shorter so i'm giving it another two weeks two to three weeks to complete okay <laughs> now let's go into the daily time frame that's a weekly let's go into the daily for the daily cycles okay guys so we had an intermediate cycle I was talking about last year, August. And since then we had three completed daily cycles. One, two, three. So this is the fourth. And as I said, usually the max we get for gold is four. I think I've seen one with five, but not it's very rare. So four seems seems like what this one is heading for. I won't consider this a daily cycle, it was too short. Let's see, that would be actually not too sure. It could be a daily cycle. Or this is a fifth if you want to count it. Right, but I'm sticking to this being a fourth for now until we see. Get more clear signs. Um, from the previous cycle low on the daily time frame to this one, this will be our daily cycle trend line. We broke that so clearly we're in an intermediate cycle decline. In an intermediate cycle decline, or let me clear this up. There will, once there's a break of a daily cycle trend line, signals a daily cycle low. When we get a failed daily cycle, which would mean that the next cycle low drops lower than the previous cycle low, that signals an intermediate cycle decline. And in every ICL bottom, you'll have at least one failed daily cycle. So I'm expecting for this low here, remember this low at 1275, I'm expecting that to break. We should give us a move down to, um, I would say, anywhere from 12, yeah, it could go low man, it could go 1240, but I doubt that, because this has been one strong move up. I think we'll get a mile cycle. Maybe 1260s, 1270s, somewhere around there. Could be less, but let's see. Um, we can also see that we have a, this looks like a head and shoulder move if you want to look at it that way. So, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, and then 
the break of your trigger a move down. Right. Alright, that's 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 all I have to say for in terms of cycles. I'm just looking every intermediate cycle low has at least one fear cycle, down deal cycle. We haven't had that yet. See, every cycle has been higher, every low has been higher. One, higher low here, higher low here. We're holding here, and this could be a lower high if it holds as the top of this dead cat bounce. So that will give you a low, a lower high, and then if we get a lower low, definition of a downtrend. Okay, so that's it in terms of cycles. Um, let me go back full screen. I also follow Elliot Wave, been following it a little while now. <coughs> Elliot Wave, as you know, is, um, is a useful tool, but it can be very difficult and tricky at times. If you don't have a right count, you know, you have to adjust the count, you know, you have alternate counts, you know, it can throw you all over the place if that's what you only follow. I think it's useful, but I think it has its flaws, I don't rely on it so you can get in trouble with it. I've gotten in trouble with it already. And I've just been using it as a tool, but not, I won't base everything on it. Alright, in terms of earlier wave though, this move from this, um, this, that low in August, it looks like an impulsive structure, you see? It's just been a powerful rally. It had many little chop zigzags in it, but overall it looks like an impulse. You have a one, I label this as a one, where we start out, wave one, wave two, this long rally is wave three, this is a four, on the top here, 1350, wave five. All right, and what does LS wave say about, um, about impulse waves? They are followed by corrective waves. And corrective waves usually unfold as a um, zigzag or a flat, right? And I believe now we are having a zigzag correction, an ABC correction, right? So from 13.50 here, this move down to me looks impulsive. It was pretty sharp and quick. Look at that. This is the biggest drop we had since since this whole rally. Maybe this was biggish, yeah, but. Since our lesson since here, since November, this has been the first real down move. You know, everything else between has been very shallow. If you try to short, if you want precise or dead accurate, you got run over on your last money for the last couple of months. So to me, this this is significant. This shows a change in character in the market. You know, this drop has been biggest, biggest drop since Mm, as I said, November. So it's a change of character. It's showing that this top here was significant. This was to me the final top of the cycle. So anyway, we had this A move, and then I've been saying I, I think we'll get a bounce. I've been saying it um, in the chat rooms. Look for a bounce around this area here. It went a little further than I thought. Actually, it, it went about where I thought, because when, when we got this one, this, this um, if you can see this, this, this um, line here, projection, I'll show you my, my um, market projection. It actually followed it, Tati. So uh, I said from here, this day I drew it and posted it. We got the bounce, a little drip, dip, then a bounce, then a dip, then a bounce. So, so far, so correct, correct so far. Um, um, I'm thinking it's gonna have a um, C wave drop from here. So this bounce, I consider it as a dead cat bounce. So I label this as a B. As long as this high holds 13, 11. Of course, if we break above 13 level, our bets are off. This is not a B. Um, pff, who knows, man? This could be the final bottom here. And I'm wrong. This could be the bottom. And this is the start of the next impulse wave up. But I'm just doubting it because of my cycle analysis. Remember, it's good to combine multiple analysis to, to, to give you a big picture of you. Don't rely just on one thing. Don't just rely on LL wave alone. 
right? So based on my psychoanalysis, it's still too early to call a bottom here. We have not had a fear cycle low yet. We need at least one fear cycle low to confirm that we are ready to bottom. So we got our B, this B wave bounce and I'm calling for a C wave drop. At least that's what I'm that's what I'm trading on. I'm, I'm short some minus um not some minus. I'm I only got short dust because uh it's, it's still a risky play, so I didn't want to you know go heavy or anything, just just some dust, you know, just so just so play around and see if we get this drop. And what I really want is to get a bottom to go long. That's what I'm looking for. So my predictions are that sometime around the end of March, beginning of earlier first week of April, we could see a bottom. And I have my feed time zones here. Um, lined up with the cycles bottom. They've been predicting very accurate so far, except this one. This is a third wave value, so. Anyway, um, next next bottom probably around April and seasonality shows that during this time frame goal is usual week around this this month March going to April. <coughs> yeah, guys. So I'm looking for a C wave drop. Um, let's go into the the, the um the intraday time frame to look on our level wave and see where we could be. Right, so let me look on the 30 minutes time frame. Alright, so here is the top here, B wave, and this definitely looks like an impulse. Remember that drop, um, when was it Thursday, I think? It looks impulsive. One, two, three, four, five. This bounce here looks like an ABC. Um, from here, if this is the top of our wave, to have drawn our next trend line. Connecting that, so this will be our next resistance zone. So between here and this was a one of the larger time frame daily. So this whole area here, I'm considering it as resistance zone. Anything in this zone is a short in opportunity for me. As long as this high here was um, wave two based on that wave should not get above wave one. So we could still run up. To 13, 10, maybe this wasn't the top. Maybe get one or more move here. But if we get up to 13, 10, I, I really consider that a broken LA wave structure, and we could be looking for new highs. But we're not going to spot the 13, 10 and probably drop back. Doubt that. But 13, 10 is gonna break out. Anyway, let's label this as a top. So if this is a wave one, this is a two, a wave three projection. Wave trees usually run at least 100% of wave one. So my fib retracement, fib target from wave to 100% is 27. But um, commodities that go <coughs> usually wave trees are very powerful. So I'm thinking if we get if this are two, a tree would probably carry still 138%, which is about 80. That could be a target. And we could even get higher, maybe a one six to one percent. But I'm not betting on that. Right, let's, let's just say probably for now, um, one thirty eight twelve eighty, which was where I drew my projection from fifth of March. So wave three take us to probably twelve eighty. We'll get a wave four bones there after soon. Um, since this was a sharp wave two, what does um that wave say about the alternation? Usually, if you have a sharp wave two rally, um, the wave four would be more corrective, so more probably like a, a beer flag or a flat. So maybe get on that tree and it just chop, and then we we'll get our last last final drop wave five. And wave fives in whole usually are are actually stronger than wave three. Not all the times. But anyway, um so I have my zone here, buying zone 1260, 1270. Okay. Um I remember this week you have FOMC 
which we know FMC goes, man. Yes, you can get a lot of crazy moves, maybe like spikes, fake coat, bull trap, bear trap, fake coat. You have to be very careful on FOMC days. You can get, um, if you're a day trader, you can get chopped down, or if you're really good, you can make a lot of money on FOMC days. Either way, FOMC should be the catalyst, in my opinion, for either a breakout up or a breakdown. We will know, man. We will definitely know this week who is right, bears or bulls. I'm leaning bearish. I could be wrong as usual. I've been wrong many times, and this was the bottom here. And, you know, that was it. I'm all ready to go off. I doubt in that. Um, but just doing my analysis, um, I'm sticking to bearish. Alright, so that's it for Elliot Wave. So, to sum up the Elliot Wave, I'm thinking that um, we will get uh, a C Wave done soon. I think we already started C Wave. We had a Wave 1 on Thursday. We have a Wave 2 on Friday. Now I think we're setting up this week for a wave tree. And then sometime in the next two to three weeks, we get our final bottom. We need that field daily cycle below, below um, let's see. We need a field daily cycle below, below this region here, the twelve seventy five. We need that. We need to see people um stop loss get hit. We need to see bearishness. We need to see people on Jane on board start crying and talking about yo, I lose everything, man, or what are we going to know? And, and we need to see all of those be the bulls, we need to see them start to bearish. Then that's that's when we, then that's the time to buy. Then that's the time where the bottom is close. We need that washout. Alright. Alright, so that's it for end that we have. Um, no to Wyckoff. Because to me, Wyckoff, Wyckoff is a dad man, Wyckoff is a champ. To me, that's the number one um, analysis. Um, the number one way to study markets is uh, Wyckoff. Accumulation, distribution. Yeah, that thing is, is, trust me, if you know Wyckoff, I'm still, I've been doing it for like a while now, but there's so much to learn. And if you get that man and you're good in Wyckoff analysis, I'm pretty sure, man, you're you're gonna make crazy money. Right, um, anyway, so like of just like other wave, just like cycles, like of can be applied to daily time frames, intraday, every time frame. So, let me just give some examples here. Um, just look on this intraday, like of analysis, right? Um, I'm not gonna show everything here, but just based on my knowledge, the movement that we had, the price action we had on Friday, to me, in goal, this definitely looks like a distribution structure, right? It looks like it to me. Um, I need to look in. I need to um, to see some more confirmation, but so far it looks like a distribution. We need some more information though. This high here has to hold. If this high here don't hold, then it's invalidated. So, what will wake up? So, wake up, you see, anytime you have these choppy ranges, like bear flags, bull flags, pennants, all these things, they are either accumulation, structure, or distribution. Right, the, the smart money, the big money, they're, they're either selling and keeping the price in a tight range so that it can offload their shares. They're getting out because they're preparing for a major move down. Or if it's accumulation, they are taking their time and buying. They're buying, buying, buying. They're keeping it in a range and frustrate everybody so that they can accumulate as much shares as possible before price takes off. Right? So as I said, uh, I think this is distribution, so uh, what, I, what I'm seeing, I think this is a, like intraday mini buying climax, this move up here, this spike up. Uh, it, looks in, it looks strong, right? In the daily time frame, you, I mean eventually you'll be like, yeah man, this looks strong. I think this is like a, a buying climax here, then we have an automatic reaction. 
that was what we call a secondary test, testing this original climax. Then we got a saw. What is a saw? Saw is a sign of weakness where price breaks down below previous support. So we have a saw here, it broke down. It's a sign of weakness. Then after that, we got a strong move up. At least it looked like that until <laughs> this candle here. This is what I call up trust. Well, I'm sorry, what well, Wyckoff we call up trust. So that's how it would look. Check it out. Wouldn't you think this is bullish? You have a bullish angle and it broke above here. So if you're trading this intraday, you, a lot of people are buying this here because I think the price is going to go up now, probably 13, 7, 13, even 13, 10. Alright, so what happened next? You got this candle here. Alright, um, if you didn't patiently wait and wait for the candle to confirm, this would look like another big green candle. It would look like another bullish engulfing. So those who were impatient or who got excited, they bought somewhere up here. They got trapped. So that's a bull trap. They got trapped and then price closed down. So you got a long leg doji. And then what? Red, red, red. <laughs> <laughs> so they're down. These guys are down some money here. Not much probably, but they're down. Um, yeah, so the day closed off was this back back near the open flat. Uh, so uh, if this is a if this is distribution in terms of wake off, this is just big money guys setting this up man they're selling they're getting out of positions because they, they know that the next leg is what down down big time anytime you have accumulated distribution you get a mark down or a mark up if it's a mark down you can expect lower prices coming okay so that's analysis on goal um one more thing yeah, let, let's look up minus because minus is what most people play. Alright, um, start with GDX. Okay, uh, minus are not a, minus are tricky, man. Um, minus are a very tricky thing to trade. You have to be on point. You have to be knowledgeable. You have to, you have to know what you're doing, man. Especially when trading times three ETFs, you don't know what you're doing in that year. You're just asking for trouble. See too many people trading that thing and they don't know what they're doing. Trust me, you better know what you're doing, man. If you lose on time three ETF or options, you're done. You lose everything. <laughs> anyway, um, just like go, man. I thought I'm, I'm seeing this as um, a A wave, a B wave, and setting up for C wave. Um. There are some gaps down that I believe we need to fill first before we bottom. This gap here is what I'm even for. 20.8, 20.7. That's what I'm looking for in GDX. Right, we have this gap here on the open. We could fill it this week on FOMC to get everybody bullish again. That would be a 9 though. I mean, I really don't want to because I have dust. I can't deal with the chop chop foolishness. I just want this thing to drop and get over it, but what am I to say the thing, you know? The market does what it wants to do. Anyway, um GDX or let's look on GDX um same thing ago man opened up on Friday gap up. I didn't expect a gap up. That's drama projection here from a long time ago. Um we got the gap up. Yeah, it was happy. We got this big candle up. This made everybody boy just like what everybody, a lot of people probably bought here. And I was saying, yo, gap to, gap to fade, man. Gap to fade. People were laughing at me. It went at least I had on a top, but look what happened. Same thing, gap to fade. Gap to fade. Nice, it was short here. And then I said, um, <laughs> on, the, on the board, 
Ja, Pablo X verkar ha bulltrappat den där det är. Det går ham. Got it. Nej, så kan man upp. Is it a bulltrapp? Could we see higher next week? Of course we could. Whatever for him see. You will make him feel this gap here. Anything can happen. Just like goal, if it's distribution, if it's distribution, you're gonna get down, up, down, maybe up, down, and then a final leg down. Um, let's see what happens, man. Um, one more thing, just quickly, look on GDXG. Same thing, a little stronger bounce than on GDX, but it has a gap, two gaps to fill this one here. And then, um, um, what are we looking for this gap here? 30, on 30, 29.7. To mark a final bottom, somewhere around there, I have my, I have my target box here. I hope it hits it, man, because I think that once this bottoms, the next leg of, the next upside leg will begin after that. And, um, gold, I think gold reaching a point now where it's almost done with this chop since 2013. You know, I think it, this whole bottom, yeah, this is definitely a bottom instruction since 2013. Accumulation, I was saying, wake off long term accumulation. Too much time has been spent here. Once this has a breakout, man, above here, after the races, man, back to maybe all 170 or higher in GDXJ, definitely. Um, the other waivers are saying that this is a, a this, they're gonna have a, that bounce is gonna be just a B and then back to a new low in gold. I don't, I don't see that happening. They could, I just doubt that if it was gonna go to 900 and go, would I have that already somewhere in here? There's so much negativity down here. Go, should I don't drop to 900 already? It's not going around to no 900. Foolishness that. If, if that happened, well, then probably just done trade gold forever. <laughs> that would be fucked up, man. But, oh, sorry for my language. <laughs> anyway, um, that's it, guys. Just looking for a UFC drop. Um, again, be careful, you know, if you're gonna short, you know, keep your stop loss above here, because, you know, break above this high, I mean, sorry, not here, above the high here, in GXJ35, break above that, and definitely this probably, the, the, this was a bottom. So, you know, just be nimble and keep up, man, guys. You know, I might be wrong as usual, I've been wrong many times, but... You know, keep an open man. We may get another drop. And if G G G drops down to here, that would mean J now back to the eights. And then you know, um, directions. They once they get too low, they they're gonna reverse split it again. So you could say uh, you know, there's a chance that J now get reverse split. So that's it, man. Um, have a good weekend, guys. Uh, let's see what this this week brings. Thank <laughs> you.